What's up, y'all, and welcome back to Kid Ventures. This week, we're taking a look at this Victron Energy Multi Plus Compact Inverter Battery Charger that we unboxed a month or so ago. We're going to be taking a look at its functions, its installation, wiring guide, and everything else. It's definitely a little bit more expensive than some of its competitors, but so far, it has lived up to the hype, and it works amazingly well. We're going to take a look at how to install this bad boy, how to install the remote control panel, how to wire up everything safely, and get your shore power hooked up to charge your batteries. A quick safety reminder, electricity is extremely dangerous. Uh, this device is capable of providing a pretty serious electrical shock. In general, electrical installations are not appropriate for DIY or home installs. Get somebody who is a trained electrician to make this install for you. That being said, if there's anything in this video that you don't understand, do not attempt to try this installation. Tools needed for this setup are going to be a socket set, some needle nose pliers, electrician's gloves, a drill with Phillips head bit, wood drilling bits, a good set of wire strippers, a jigsaw for cutting the hole for the control panel, and that should be about it. Let's take a look at how we're going to do this. Step one, we're going to remove the Phillips head screws holding down the front panel of the Victron Multi Plus Compact. We'll remove that front panel and all of the innards are exposed. Now you may have noticed that my inverter charger is installed horizontally on the wall here. A lot of inverter chargers are not supposed to be installed that way, but the manual for this device explicitly says that it is okay to install horizontally or vertically as long as there is clearance on all four sides to allow for heat dissipation. I did rotate our view here so that you vertical installers can make sense of what we're talking about. Now we got a whole lot of connections here. Uh, let's go in order. The control panel is just a simple RJ45 Ethernet jack that connects to the separately available uh, control panel. The battery positive terminal hooks up to the positive terminal of your battery or to the positive bus bar. Uh, there are a number of sensor hookups, temperature sensor, battery relays, a number of other things you can configure. And next we've got the battery negative which connects to the negative battery terminal and or the negative bus bar. And then lastly, we have the auxiliary battery positive, which would be if you want to hook up your starter battery and be able to charge it from this inverter charger as well. Now let's take a look down here at our AC terminals. Now here's our terminals for AC in and out, alternating current. Now the in is going to be your shore power and the out is going to be to your breaker box, uh, your house circuits, etc. For both sides, you're going to have three wires to deal with, a line or hot wire, that's the black one, a neutral wire, which is the white one, and a ground wire or PE wire, which stands for protective earth. So each side is going to have black, white, and green wires. Now, as you can see, these are not reverse mirror images of each other. They are clearly labeled, and on this unit, it goes line, neutral, ground, ground, line, neutral. Please double check that you are inserting the wires into the correctly labeled terminals. And you can also double check this against your manual diagram which will show you where they need to go. Even if you don't hurt yourself, you could potentially damage your very expensive battery charger inverter. And nobody wants that. Ah ah ah! You didn't say the magic word! So at this point, we've got all the main connections hooked up to the inverter battery charger. One other quick thing, a helpful tip, is the labels on the printed circuit board that show you the polarity, positive or negative, of the different lug hookups. One other thing that occurs on the outside of the case is this chassis ground, which is for the case itself to be grounded. Now, your setup may or may not require this. Please refer to the manual and whether you're installing this in a mobile vehicle with a floating ground or if you're doing it on an actual house install. Now, when you're routing the battery cables and the AC wiring, make sure to use these little plastic inserts and uh, 
Routing devices, those are specifically to prevent chafing on the wires uh, so that they don't short. All right, it's time to go ahead and put the panels back on and put the screws back in to close her up. Now we'll go ahead and turn the main power switch to the on position and if you did everything correctly, you will see a status light depending on the mode that the device is in. I don't have it plugged into shore power right now, so it's showing me inverter, which is correct. All right, let's go ahead and get to the fun part of cutting holes in things and installing control panels. Right here, we're cutting the hole for where we want to seat the control panel. It comes with a neat little template that you can use to cut out the correctly sized hole. The route that I took is four screws on the extreme points of the back of the control panel. So putting this here should give you a guide for where to drill your pilot holes and what size screws you're going to need. Mine did not include these screws. I had to buy them. They were machine screws. Uh, I think there might be some different variation in sizes as to why they don't include them. But go ahead and make sure you have the correct sized machine screws in order to screw it in from the back. Now with your opening made and your pilot holes drilled, go ahead and route your RJ45 cable through and plug it into your control panel. And this is pretty hard to see, but now you're going to use those machine screws, put them through the holes, and tighten them in to the back of the control panel. This will lock this control panel down really well. And voila! If your inverter charger is receiving power, you will immediately get feedback when you manipulate some of the controls on the control panel. You can go ahead and control the power options from here, either to off, on, or charger only. And then you can also manipulate this knob to determine the maximum amperage of the charger itself. This is relevant uh, determine on whether you're plugged into a 15 amp power source shore power or a 30 amp power source shore power You might need to adjust those numbers dependent on what your equipment is ready to handle So congratulations, you've harnessed the power of electricity and you're ready to use it in your vehicle Once again, we encourage you to be extremely careful when doing any kind of electrical installation Thanks again for joining us today and as always, please feel free to like or subscribe all of the tools and materials that we used are available in the video description, and we certainly look forward to seeing you next week. This is Kid Ventures signing off.